The Shore Conference boys lacrosse season is up and running. Kevin Williams on the Shore Sports Network, joined by Bob Batters, our main lacrosse guy all season long. Bob, the weather's starting to get better. Lacrosse season is here, and I almost feel like there's a little analogy between boys lacrosse and boys basketball in the Shore Conference this year. In basketball, it was all about the Ranny School and their two superstars. And right now in lacrosse, it's about Manasquan and maybe one of the best players in the country. It certainly is. And uh, we were joking before, it's kind of, it's Birchwatch. Canyon Birchwatch, <laughs> certainly early this season and probably for much of the season will be that way. Of course, the Warriors, the top-ranked team in the Shore Sports Network, top 10, two-time defending Shore Conference tournament champions, sectional champions a year ago, and they returned a loaded squad looking to win their first state title. And as you mentioned, Canyon Birch heading off to play for your beloved Nittany Lions next year. Uh, you know, he's on track to break all the records <laughs> in the short conference and in the state. Uh, in his first game of the season against Ocean, scored eight goals, added three assists, and with the eight goals, set a new short conference career goals record, breaking the mark of 274 set by Southern's Dylan Jinks, who's now at the University of Hartford, starring up there, led them to an NCAA tournament berth. Last season, next on the list is the short conference points record of 431, which is a, that's an astronomical number, held by CBA's Tommy Dore, who, as everyone who's a lacrosse fan certainly knows that name, went on to have a big career at Johns Hopkins University. Right now, Birch has 417 career points. He's 15 points away. They play CBA coming up today. We'll talk about that a little later. 15 points is a lot. I'm not going to say he's not going to get it, but odds are it looks like he's going to get that certainly uh, you know, in the next couple games. Then after that, we're talking state records held by you know, legendary A.L. Johnson player, uh, former two-time All-American at the University of Virginia and current Montclair State head coach Matt Pasquet. 362 goals, 468 career points. Those are the marks. Um, and right now, you know, Birch is looking like he's certainly going to get those. The goals was the hardest one in terms of how far away he was. Uh, he needed you know, over 80 coming into the season to get there. You know, he's got 18 goals in three games, so he's well on his way. The points one should be no problem. He should hit that uh, probably before we're done with April. So really, every game it's kind of what numbers does he have, how's Madison doing, uh, and, and how much closer is he, get, is he going to get to those records. He's going to end up you know, as the, you know, the greatest scorer in New Jersey history. And, and from a conference that does not have the longevity and the history as certainly North Jersey, Morris County, Bergen County has, you know, it's a pretty special accomplishment that he's going to hit, and it's certainly fun to, you know, to watch that ride. You know, you've covered sports for as long as you have, and I have as well, but a lot of times we talk about athletes who achieve great personal statistics but aren't as good as their numbers. Just sometimes they're, mm -hmm. this is not the case with this young man. No, he is every bit as good as his numbers. And if you haven't got a chance to watch Mattis Small lacrosse or see Canyon Birch play lacrosse, uh, if you're not a lacrosse fan or just casually follow the sport through our site, go out and watch them play because he is a, he's a special player. He does things on that field that, that you don't see that are uncommon. Uh, he certainly has a great cast around him, uh, and we'll get to that when we talk about the Mattis Fund CBA game, but he's a special player to things that he can do on the field. Great athlete, too. You know, starting running back for their football team, so uh, he's just a very good athlete uh, and a special, special lacrosse player. Also, you had a story this week on ShoreSportsNetwork.com selected to play in the Armour All-American game. That's a pretty big deal. It is. The Under Armour All-American game, uh, which will be June 29th at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, televised on ESPNU. You know, he was uh, one of the first 11 selected to play in the game. They picked 44. Obviously, split that into teams of 22. Again, a very prestigious game to play in. Uh, and certainly from this area... You know, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, maybe Dylan James was selected, Tommy Dore. You know, we, we haven't really had anybody else on that level. So he was, you know, among the first wave of 11 selected. And, and that's pretty cool. Certainly for him, a major accomplishment. Uh, and for the conference, a, a really nice feather in the cap of, of the entire shore. Going back to the Ranny Manasquan comparison mm -hmm. that I've come up with in some <laughs> bizarre fashion, we said all along with Ranny, anything less than winning at all would be a disappointment and they ended up winning it all. Manasquan, for all their success and all the championships, has never won a state title. So is that the goal? I mean, do they need to win that to, to really stamp themselves as having a great season? Absolutely. And I don't think, you don't want to say what if, even if they didn't win that, 
it, the odds are they still would have a great season. They probably wouldn't think so. Talking about in Group 1, the other team you have there is Mountain Lakes, a legendary lacrosse program coached by a legendary coach, not just in New Jersey, but in the entire country. Uh, and Tim Flynn, who has over you know 700 career victories. Mountain Lakes currently the number two team in the state. That's a team they lost to in last season's Group 1 final. It's probably the team they're going to have to face again if they get there. So that's a huge hill, but you're right. That's, that's what everything's geared towards. They've won a short conference tournament, two of them. They've won two sectional titles in the last three years. That last hill to climb is winning that overall group title and getting to the tournament champions. And you know, this senior class, from the time they were freshmen, they came in, um, you know, they knew by the time this year came, you know, it was going to be a special group, and it really is. Aside from Birch, you have James Pendergast, you know, Rutgers recruit, Mike Page going to Syracuse, uh, Jack Fabian, outstanding defenseman, going to Richmond, Michael Point, their goalie, going to Siena, five Division I players, <laughs> and, and just more great players as well. This is the year. You know, if it's going to happen, this is the year that, that Mana Spawn's going to do it. So, again, we're, we're a ways away from yeah. that, but, you know, that is the goal. That, that's what they've all talked about, even last season and certainly this season. It's their last chance as seniors, and, that, and that's the goal. And the only sure team ever to win the state title is Rumson. Is Rumson, who beat Mountain Lakes when they did a few years back. I'll never forget that game. We're Hope o Valley winning in overtime. Charlie Curran with the uh, game-winning goal. All right, a couple of other things. Let's bounce around a little bit. Good start for Jackson Memorial. The Jaguars beat Jackson Liberty this week, stamping themselves undefeated. Are they the threat to Southern Regional Class A South? And I believe the Rams have won six in a row. They have. Uh, it, you know, it's Southern's division until somebody else proves otherwise. As you mentioned, six straight Class A South division titles for the Rams. Right now, Jackson 3-0, you know, 2-0 in division, so certainly looking like a league contender. Tom's North there as well. You know, the, the Mariners... Um, have kind of been a team that, you know, a little bit inconsistent over the last couple years, but remember those years when they were good, they were really good, competing deep in the short conference tournament. Remains to be seen just how good, but they're 2 and I was well in division. So those are the only two teams that can challenge Southern right now in terms of the wins, losses, and division. Uh, Jackson doesn't play Southern until late in the year. I think it's their last division game. Um, so we'll know when that game happens if it's for the division title. But you know, Jackson's a team pretty balanced. Uh, they've got good scoring led on the attack line by their senior, Santo Perrazzo, and their junior, Sean Laverty, big body football player, you know, 6'3", 225 pounds, so physical presence up on the attack line. Drew uh, Walenti, good sophomore midi. Matt DeRosa, a freshman, making an impact as well. Jake Bryson leading the defense. So, again, a really good start for Jackson. If you're 3-0, that's where you want to be about 10 days into the year. And if you're Middletown South, it's even better to be 4-0. They're off to a good start. In you know, Middletown South last season, really probably the breakout story in the entire shore. You know, set a school record for wins in a season. Uh, had that big win over Friel Township, which kind of was the eye-opening win. Really stamped their year, made it to the Shore Conference Tournament, almost pulled an upset in the state tournament. And they brought back most of their team. You know, they graduated a couple guys, but they brought back their leading scorer in Connor Ard, um, a, a very versatile midfielder in Matt Tardy, who you know has an outstanding yep. linebacker on their football team, their goalie Shane Murphy, uh, and their head coach Rob Grella really characterized them as a tough team who's going to play solid defense. And he wasn't wrong. Through four games, they've only allowed seven goals. The teeth of their schedule is still to come. So we're going to find out a lot more when they play Howell, Friel Township, CBA, and also the rivalry game with Middletown North, uh, the Mayor's Cup, at the end of the season. Middletown North also off to a nice start. But Middletown South, you know, the question was, can they build off what they did last season? And the answer is yes so far. Let me throw this one at you, too. A team that has, has off to a good start and has been scoring goals in bunches, and that's the Lions of Lacey. Yeah, Lacey, I, I think, and not a surprise, the Lions came into the season uh, with a good offense from last year and a good amount of those parts coming back. Uh, the two leaders are on the attack line, seniors Dylan Vital and Dominic Waltonowski. And I, I feel like you know, they played three games and you know, they went 21 goals, 22 goals, only 10 against Donovan, <laughs> but still, you know, playing really well. Uh, and those guys, you know, putting up you know, 6, 7, 8, 10 points a game. And Lacey was a top 10 team last year. You know, they had some good late season wins. Um, and in B South now, it kind of looks like it's them and Shore Regional, which is our fourth ranked team. And they played last year in a non-divisional game, and it was, I think, a 13-12, 14-13 overtime game that Shore ended up winning. So just looking on that, you got to figure the Lions are right there to compete for that division title, and they had a great start. And not any other teams that you sort of caught your fancy early in, early in the season? And as I mentioned, Middletown North, um, that's a program that is 
you know, kind of struggled in, in the wins losses department. They're off to a three to one start. Their only loss is to Freeland Township. Head coach Jason Pino doing a real nice job over there. A North is a tough division. You certainly have CBA at the top, which is you won, I think, every division title since that became a division. Freeland Township, Ben Howell are always tough, top 10 teams. Uh, and now Middletown South has kind of joined the conversation there as well. So Middletown will have some tough games coming up, but again, 3-1, that's how you want to start the season. All right, well, how we like to start the season is a great showdown early on, and we have one today, this afternoon, Manasquan at CBA, top two teams in your top ten. They are, uh, and CBA started the, se started the season uh, number three. They moved up to two in our latest rankings, and Manasquan, of course, has been at the top you know, since last year. Hopefully the weather holds out. Uh, the rain is supposed to be coming later, uh, but again, hopefully this game happens. Not only is it one versus two in the Shore, it's a good rivalry. Mattis won in CBA, yeah. the two oldest lacrosse programs in the Shore Conference. Hmm. Uh, so you have that dynamic, those two split uh, games last year, CBA winning the regular season, and then Mattis won winning in the Shore Conference Tournament Final. Mattis won head coach Sean Cunningham, a CBA alum, who was a standout defenseman there. So you have a lot of angles there. Uh, and also with County Burks, we mentioned, 15 points away. Tough to pencil a kid in for 15 <laughs> points in one game against CBA, but as I learned last year, kind of questioning how many points you can score in a game, uh, I'm not going to say that again. So, you know, if you have a chance to get out there and, and the weather's not too bad, you know, head up to uh, Lincroft today and, and really see it be a good one. And some of the best lacrosse players in the show, we talked about Mattis Vaughn and their outstanding players. Uh, CBA led by their senior attackman, Connor McCray. Their sophomore midfielder, Kyle Aldridge, who's really you know, taken on an increased role this year. Tommy Gray is one of the best defensemen in the shore, and, and those guys have played well. They've got two wins, both in A North, their only two losses are out of conference to Don Bosco Prep and Chatham. So, uh, you know, again, CBA, they lost 19 seniors from last year. That was a great team. Yeah. Hard to replace those guys, but, you know, head coach Dave Santos will have his team ready. Well, we'll do this from time to time throughout the spring, but you can follow Bob. 24-7 at shoresportsnetwork.com. Of course, he covers la boys lacrosse like nobody around the shore. I know where you'll be today. Uh, and But again, you can follow Bob and, of course, on Twitter at? At Bob underscore batters on Twitter. Follow Shore Sports Net on Twitter as well. All the lacrosse news, notes, highlights, anything we can throw out there. It'll be on our social media platforms. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> For Bob Batters, I'm Kevin Williams. Follow lacrosse all season long again on shoresportsnetwork.com.